OurStorePause.com has done over $40 million in sales, which is great. But what if I had to start over? What if I were in your shoes? What if I needed to start a new dog themed store and I wanted to take it from zero to a million dollars in sales? In today's video, what I'll be showing you is how to find products that you can sell if you wanna start your own print on demand store and you wanna see how I, an eight figure seller, would get started from the ground up. So let's get into today's video. Sip a Kratom, you know what we gotta do, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's green Kratom. Uh, hopefully you saw our video about, um, it's not luck, how we scaled five different Shopify stores to seven figures. If you haven't seen that, that will pair perfectly with this video. So make sure you check that one out as well. But for now, I want to show you how I would start this store over, how I would find product ideas and how I would find ad copy ideas. And we're gonna do all this without AI, by the way. We're gonna use freaking our hands. Oh my God, we're gonna type. It's gonna be really simple. Um, and you'll be able to come up with 10, 15, 20, 40 product ideas in a matter of minutes if you follow this. So uh, if you don't know, Pause is our apparel brand, sell dog apparel. It's all very simple stuff. Um, we started, this brand is, is very old now, like eight, nine years old, still rocking, still crushing it. But if I had to start over and I had to find new product ideas, this is where most people get hung up. So what I'm gonna do is show you three different ways to reverse engineer already selling products and how you could get these products up on your store. So three different tools we're gonna use today. Etsy, of course, Google, Yes, we will be using Google and then a paid tool, AdSpy. All of these are good and we will be able to find winning designs using all of them. And if you can't do this, if you can't follow instructions, you're not cut out for this because what I'll show you today is so simple. We're just gonna do a really simple search here. Dog lover shirt, right? By the way, Etsy is the least reliable uh, method out of what you're gonna be seeing today. What we wanna look at when we're looking at these shirts, and, and remember this shirt because this is gonna be important, but what we wanna look at is reviews for this item because if we look statistically, we can see what percentage of shoppers typically leave reviews. This is important. So 43% uh, of consumers report that they often or always leave reviews. 72% uh, sometimes leave a review while 9.2% never do. Well. Mm, that's interesting because I, I don't believe that data because my data shows on our source, it's more likely around 5%, but let's go here because um, it looked like this data aligned a bit more with what I see. So what percentage of people leave online reviews? Only five to 10% of customers actually write reviews. So what we're looking at here, if we ever wanna try to estimate sales off of a review count is times it by 20. So this has 82 reviews. And if you wanna be safe, you can times it by like 15. Okay, if you wanna like under undercut yourself a little bit. So 82 times 15. Right here, we can assume that this has made 1,230 sales. Now, the, these people are underselling. I would never sell something this cheap. Like if you look at what we sell for on our store. So we have crew neck sweaters on here. <laughs> you may have seen the uh, recent video where I talked about having the idea to sell crew necks. And I was like, you know what? Let's fuck, let's do it. Let's sell some crew necks. Anyway, so if we were to sell a crew neck, um, it would be around 40 to 50 bucks. So people undervalue. They think that they have to undercut on price to sell things in general. Watch our other video about why making a seven figure store isn't luck because I explained to you how you can stick out from the competition without needing to undercut. I would never do that profit mark. People say like t-shirts don't work and it's because people are selling t-shirts for 1890. You're never gonna make a fucking profit on this, okay? This is stupid. You should not do this, okay? Because then you have to sell tens or hundreds of thousands of them to make a good profit. Raise your prices and get good profit. You know what I'm saying? So that's the formula though. We just take uh, this number, 82, and we times it by, let's just say, like we said, 15, and it's 1230, and then let's times that by $18.90. So about $23,000 in sales on this shirt. Now, if we were to sell this, like I said, we'd sell it for uh, closer to 50, so we'd be looking more at $60,000 in sales. You see the huge difference that is? And that's why I would never sell something this low. It looks like it's maybe a limited time sale. I don't know if that's true or not, but whatever. So what we can do is come here, we can sort by, uh, top customer reviews if we want. This is kind of cool right here, America. This is like a good 4th of July style shirt. You gotta keep in mind, like when you're selling these niche products, you wanna match um, holidays that are around. So as you can see here, like this is a Valentine's dog shirt we're selling. And come 4th of July, I would do research for a 4th of July design. I might find something like this. Now this one, we, we can't see reviews for this, so I'm uh, not, not quite sure. But I could see this, I could get inspiration from it, and I'm like, okay, I can try that out, you know? Know what I'm saying? This is funny. Paw in order, comfort colors. This is cool, a little doggy dap shirt. So this is how you could do it on Etsy. And like I said, Etsy is like the least viable method. This is the one I'm least likely to use. Really, 
and let's keep this up because this is actually really relevant. But really, one of the great things you can use is Google. And I, I don't see many people reverse engineering Google this way when they enter a niche, but let's do like dog lover t-shirt, right? And what we wanna look for are the ads at the top because we can see that if someone's running ads, that means they're making money. So we can see a niche store right here um, pause in it, pause in it. We can see Pawfict House right here. We can see our store, pause, let's go. We can see Paw Warts and Pawsh in it. So let's pull up these three different stores. We've got Pawfict House right here. We've got Paw Warts and we've got Pawsh in it. And sure, you could just go around this store and look at their designs and see, uh, okay, like, which one of these do I wanna sell? But that's not really good. We, we want a more data-driven approach. We wanna see what they're spending money on, what they're driving ads to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll all the way down. We already know these people run ads because we've seen their Google ads. So now we're gonna click on this Facebook link at the bottom of these pages. So this is Posh and its Facebook page for these guys. We'll scroll down. They usually always have the Facebook link in the footer. And then for uh, the last one, we'll also scroll down to the bottom. And of course, Facebook link. Yes, you can always rely on people to have their Facebook links in the footers. So now that we're here, we wanna click on the about button at the top, click on page transparency, and now we can see this page is currently running ads. And then if we click here, we click see all, and then we can click on go to ad library. And now I can kind of see what they're spending money on. What I wanna do is filter, and I want to see active ads and apply. I only wanna see ads they're still running because I wanna see what designs are working for them now. So now I have a list and you can see a lot of these ads are just launched like literally yesterday. But if we scroll down, we can go look for some of their older ads. That's what we wanna look at. We wanna look at ads that have been running for a long time. But look at this, like how many product ideas can I get? I know they're running ads to it, so I know it must be making some sort of sales. And I can also see their ad copy. So I have an idea of what products are selling for them, what ad copy is working for them, and then I can use this to inform my own designs. Now let's look here at my paw warts, one of the other stores that we found. Oh, beautiful one star rating. <laughs> we can go to page transparency again. This page is currently running ads. Okay, so see all, do the same steps, go to ad library, and we can see, again, we'll go to filters, active ads only, apply filter, and we can see what ads they're running. So like, look at these. Some of these have been running since November. They're personalized t-shirts where they allow you to upload your dog photos. So great, this is a cool idea. I could build up a niche store. If I had to start pause over, I could build a niche store just all around these custom photo um, ideas for dogs. And if you want, you could just do personalized print on demand t-shirts and we could go use an app that allows personalization. So print on demand platform, print on demand t-shirts. And this is actually what I was gonna show you is Gelato and where we're gonna go over Printful. But both of these uh, providers allow personalization, I believe. And like I said, um, I don't personally use these. We have a private supplier. We get really good rates, but I wanted to ensure that they had personalization. You can just Google around and look for a personalized print on demand provider so people can upload custom images if that was the route I wanted to go. Personally, like right now, we're not doing a lot of personalized stuff. I think <laughs> that's kind of, personally, we're not doing personalized items. <laughs> oh, sip a crowd of God, I'm so hilarious. Mm. And let's go to that last example. We have Posh in it. Again, we go to the about page, page transparency. This page is currently running ads we can see. See all, go to ad library. And now we can get a good idea of what's working for them. We go to the filter, we look at only active ads, apply the filter, and then yeah, we can see everything they're launching, we can see what's working for them, we can see what's doing well. And this is a method I just don't see people doing very often. Most people don't use Google in their product research. They're not reverse engineering this way. And again, if you wanted, like let's even look at our store for example, pause, right? We scroll down here, we go to the bottom to Facebook, we go to the about page, page transparency, this page is currently running ads, see all. Go to ad library and like you could do it on our store too. You can see our ads, you know what I'm saying? So this is how it works, okay? This is how I would start over. This is how I do my research. This is how I'd get my ideas. This is how I would figure out what to say in my ads. This is how I'd figure out how to talk to my audience. I have these stores and I mean, honestly, you could probably just go to their uh, best sellers right here and you could just look at stores best sellers too. Remember, we're trying, okay, these are the best selling t-shirts, yeah. So you could just go sort their store by best sellers if you really wanted to. I like to see what people are running ads to, but you know, they all have their best selling collections up. So, and 
this makes sense because this is what we saw they were running ads to as well. So, you know, it makes sense. Again, I think these guys are doing themselves a disservice. Obviously something's working for them, but I would raise these prices, especially because these are personalized. Like personalized stuff is a bit of a premium. If you select their premium t-shirts, $32.99, that's a little bit more in line with what I would charge. But I mean, personalization on a premium shirt, to me, that's like, that's 40 bucks. I want good profit margins because we, we want to do this to make good money. Good profit margins allow us to provide better service, to create better products. Like it, it's not just enriching yourself. So when you charge more money, you can just do better as a store owner as well because you're not like fighting for every penny. You know what I'm saying? So our last tool is gonna be AdSpy. So this is a paid tool that I use and it is basically scraping every single Facebook ad that's ever run is in here. And what we can do is we can basically tell it what we're looking for. So I want ad text includes dog. So I want dog included in the ad text. I want to sort by not date, but I want to sort by shares. I want to see something that has been seen recently. So I can do the seen between thing and it will only show me ads that have been seen this month, which means they're active. And then I also want ads that are a bit older. I don't want ads that are new because that means those are still testing. But if we do August through uh, December, then we'll only see ads that were created in this time. So if we scroll down, we m we'll start to notice that we're going to see some t-shirts. So this right here, we have, I support putting animal abusers to sleep. So this is a pretty cool t-shirt. I can click this arrow right here. I can see this was created on December 26th, last seen yesterday. So it's still running. Uh, I've been running about two months. So I can click here and I can research. I can look here, I can sort by newest comments. So I can see if this is an ad that's still running. 15 minutes ago, 50 minutes ago, two hours ago. So yes, like a lot of people are talking about this. Um, I can go look at their store. I can go to their page and repeat the process. We go to about, we can go to page transparency. We can see this page is currently running ads. Go to see all, go to ad library. And now I can, once again, just like we've seen before, reverse engineer the process. Look at what products they're selling. Look at the copy, okay? And this is how you get winning design ideas. Like this is how I would do it if I was starting over. And I would pair it with the other video that I've mentioned to you guys, which is how I took five stores or I took five stores to seven figures in sales to prove it's not luck. In that we cover a 5W process. 5W process is what has allowed us to reliably go to millions of dollars in sales. So take that process, pair it with these t-shirt research methods, and this is how I would start over. And then if I didn't have a bunch of money, I would go somewhere like Fiverr and I would hire a t-shirt designer, or you could use the AI tools. Check out our latest video where I showed how to, um, I can't even remember what it's called, Sippocratum. Mm. But check out the latest video and I, I show you how you can make designs using just the power of AI, which is really powerful too. In fact, if you're looking at our store, this design here was made exclusively with AI. So really powerful stuff. But you can come here on Fiverr or you can go to a website like Upwork and you can get design made. By the way, if you're looking for like the best niche to be in right now with apparel, this is a little hack for you for those of you who stayed to the end of the video. It's in it's in the right wing. It's in right wing um, apparel. Like let's, let's just put in the word shirt here and let's add to filters. And what you're gonna see is almost everything is right wing. These right wing stores are printing money, dude. Printing money. But we've got... In 1776, we had to clean house. The house is filthy again. We go here, 76 clothing. I'm familiar with this brand. We used to be in the right wing niche. These guys are definitely still running ads, but we can go look like the right wing niche. I mean, look at this. This started running October 2nd. It's still running. Uh, the right wing niche is, is really good. A lot of money to be made in this niche. So check it out. Use the research methods I showed you here. So you go to Fiverr, you can get design made, you can go to Upwork, you can use AI. There's a lot of tools these days. Uh, for print-on-demand suppliers, I actually have a video where I cover the best print-on-demand suppliers. Make sure to check that one out. But Gelato and Printful are really good. These are good places to start, okay? And that's it, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. This is how I would start over from scratch if I needed to find designs that sell and I wanted to build another seven-figure store. See you guys in the next video.